Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland, H-Camp Television in Hopkinton, and now H-Cat Television in Hollison. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan, our cameraman for this evening's game against Newton, post 440. Newton is four and six on the season. Ashland post 77, eight and three, just coming off a tough two to one loss yesterday against Hudson, post 77, looking to get the bats going. Owen Ward taking the hill today for post 77. It is a beautiful, sunny, 84 degree day perfect conditions for baseball and a nice breeze as well. Let's take a look at the Newton batting order. Leading things off, Ryan McLaughlin, number 10, the center fielder. Batting second, number 21, Matt Swain, the left fielder. Batting third, the third baseman, number 42, Noah Shelton. Hitting cleanup, number 17, Spencer Checkaway, the shortstop. Batting fifth, Henry Bonenfant, the designated hitter. Batting sixth, Grant Uliano, the first baseman, number 24. Batting seventh is Brandon Elias, the second baseman. He wears number 49. Batting eighth is Brett Goldstein, the catcher. He wears number 23. And wearing number 13, batting ninth, is Mike Banks, the right fielder. Anthony Panza, the pitcher for Newton Post 440. Larry, how about that Ashland Post 77 defense today? Thank you, Tom. Third base, Lewis Rossi, my favorite player. Jackson Horning at shortstop, making a return. Ronan Bates at second base. First base, Zach Passan, left to right, Dom Cavanaugh, Brad Seymour, Ben Thomas, Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching Owen Ward. And there you have it, post 77, eight and three on the season. They are second in zone five. And they are looking to get that offense going. Only three runs in their past two games as this is fouled up the right side by McLaughlin. And we are underway here at Ashland Middle School. Runs have been very, very tough to come by since the, uh, since the break. We'll get you the stats on Owen Ward, the pitcher, in just a moment. As there is a Strike. swing that yeah. could uh, not be held there. Owen Ward has pitched 11 and two-thirds of an inning. One win, no losses. A 1.20 ERA. That pitch is inside. One and two on McLaughlin. Newton won yesterday against North Chelmsford, 14 to one, to improve to four and six overall. That pitch is just outside, two and two. Over the past couple games for post 77, it's been some great pitching performances. Even in the loss yesterday against Hudson, there's a terrific pitching performance in a debut as this is hit over to left field and caught. Ben Fink had yep. a nice, nice job last night. Ben Fink uh, pitched a tremendous ball game. Went the distance and Shane Leary the night before that. A shutout. Matt Swain, the left fielder, stepping in. He's a returning player from last year. Yeah, the pitching and defense has been terrific for post 77 this year. The main concern is the bats as of late. Certainly some good power in this lineup. But we'll just see if they can get it going on their home turf. There's strike two. Nice pitch by Ward. We're going to have a tough time with this umpire, I can tell you already. We've got to listen to his voice. He doesn't raise his right hand for a strike. Nothing like the umpire we had in that Hudson game. For you viewers, you've got to tune, tune into that one. He did the cha-cha-cha on a strike three call. We'll, we'll have to get an ump animated. cam. <laughs> we'll have to get an ump cam the next time we have him. As this is fouled away up the right side, count remains one and two. Packed house tonight as, usu as usual. Yeah, fans filling in to take in some evening post-77 baseball. And there's strike three, two away. He'll throw around the diamond, and Noah Shelton, the third baseman, will step in for post-440. Now he only gets demonstrable on a called third strike. So, I don't know. Ward set to deliver. 
And this is up the left side, gloved by Rossi. Throw to first, no problem. He makes it look easy. Five to three for the third out. One, two, three, they go. To the bottom of the first we go. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM. Heading to the bottom of the first, let's take a look at the Ashland post 77 batting order. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, hitting first. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, hitting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Luke Gustafson, the DH, hitting fifth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting sixth. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And hitting ninth, Ronan Bates, the second baseman, making his debut for post 77. Larry, how about that Newton post 440 defense? For post 440, as they say in Newton, at third base, Noah Shelton. Shortstop, Spencer Checkaway. Brandon Elias at second base. Grant Uliano at first. Left to right, Matt Swain. Ryan McLaughlin. Mike Banks. Brett Goldstein catching. Anthony Panza. All right, thank you very much. Anthony Panza, the pitcher. Graduated Watertown High School this year. That's where the post far party is located in Newton on Watertown Street. Ah. Panza is a five foot nine, 165 pound lefty. And we'll see how he fares against this post 77 batting order that was hitting, that is hitting just above a 300 as of late. As we mentioned, have struggled just a bit, but we'll see if they can get that offense going. Certainly with the amount of talent in this lineup, you have to think it's only a matter of time. As Ben Thomas takes one outside, 1-0. We'll have to see how Panza does against the three lefties he'll face and how those three lefties will deal with a breaking ball of Panza if he shows one. Line up and the pitch. Inside, 2 ando. He doesn't even give you the uh, ball sign. Yep, just uh, just stands there, remains motionless. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, two and one. Pretty vocal though. Mm. Yeah, they turn up my hearing aid. Ben Thomas was hitting a 481 heading into yesterday's game. Line up and the pitch. There's another called strike two and two. Very suspenseful, suspenseful, the man in blue back there. He's really gonna wait for his call. I'd like to have the guy from last night back. He was good. Leg lift and the pitch. That's followed into the backstop. Ben Thomas stays alive. Sean Jewett, I talked to him before the game. He said there was a lot of action behind him last night. Certainly Lots of things going on. Certainly was. Ben Thomas looking uh, to get his first hit in a couple games as he puts this one up the middle, and that's going to get through the gap, and it'll be a leadoff single for post 77. Ben Thomas is aboard on a nicely hit ball. And, Larry, you mentioned it before the game that post 77 was hitting the ball yesterday, but they were just hitting it right at guys and right there is an example of a uh, difference than uh, last night with Ben Thomas finding that gap find a hole find a hole somewhere hit it hard on the ground last night they were just snake bit and uh, Ben Thomas of course is always a threat to go and Lewis Rossi is the threat to lay one down he's got the green light both have the green light yeah, two lefties at the top of the batting order as Panza takes a look at first and deals the bunt, and that's fouled off, 0-1. Must be difficult, lefty bunting on lefty pitcher. They don't see that many lefties. Lewis Rossi, of course, out of Holliston High School, graduated this year. Five foot, 750 pounder. Has been rock solid at third base, four post 77 this season. Bit of a lead at first by Ben Thomas. A long glare by Panza draws the timeout from Rossi. 
Lewis will bless the town of Amherst next year at the University of Mass. Lead once again at first as this pitch is outside, gets away from Goldstein, the catcher, and Ben Thomas will easily advance to second base on the wild pitch. Count is one and one on Rossi. Newton being a big town, and Watertown not so shabby either. Um, it's having a difficult time drawing talent. I mean, Newton's got 80,000 people, and Watertown probably 50. Well, for the last three or four years, Newton's really been at the top of District 5 as this is hit up the left side foul. One and two. Newton just kind of having a down year. They did lose a good amount of talent after last season. Yeah, I doubt you'll see him them in the state finals. Yeah, maybe not this year, but I'd imagine uh, they'll be back on their feet pretty quickly. Well, they may lose a lot of players to these uh, elite baseball teams, like the Roughnecks. A pitch outside, good eye by Rossi, two and two. For kids that are really want to seriously get into a Division I program or Division II, II program. Newton did make the state tournament last year. And actually, Ashland defeated them in that state tournament. That pitch down low. That was a fun game. I think it was a 10-8 game. There was a little row between Jake Obed, who was starting that night, and a runner on a pop-up right down the first baseline. Uh, there was a question as to whether it was runner's interference. And uh, they called it a foul ball after Lots of discussion. It is hit above Tom. us and it's a foul. Count remains full. But that was a night game. It wasn't yep. a 100 degree day game. We had a few of those to call. That was about a 95 degree night game, however. Well, that's true. <laughs> and you yep. know I'm scared of the dark, as I mentioned a few times. So. And Rossi puts this one in the air over to right center, and it's going to be caught by McLaughlin, one away. Ben Thomas stays put at second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step into the batter's box. He had a ball Monday night, uh, almost out. About the 340, 350 mark. This is a pretty good hockey player from what I understand. Certainly is. He was the MVP of Ashland's team and was in consideration for the TVL MVP as well. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. That went to Will the Thrill Abbott, didn't it? That's the right. The TVL yep. MVP. 150 points for Will Abbott. And he took the TVL MVP. I think he's the best athlete that Hopkinton ever had. Three sports. And they certainly have a lot of good athletes, so, but I'd have to agree. He's going to a lax, he's going to uh, Quinnipiac on a lacrosse scholarship. Imagine that. Panza set to deal the 1-1. One -one. Takes a look at second and delivers. Outside, two and one on Hornung. Jackson looked that one all the way in. Jackson Horning scored the only post-77 run in yesterday's loss to Hudson. As he will put this on the ground, up the middle, the second baseman able to glove it, throw to first, they'll get Horning. Ben Thomas does advance the third. That ball hit the lip of the infield and went straight up in the air. Good thing that young man was tall or that would have been in the right field. Mr. Elias. Four to three there. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh, the left fielder. Line up and the pitch. Not Allen sure. Low. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Not sure why Panza has got his back to the runner. He's not pitching out of a full windup, he's pitching from a stretch. There's nobody on second to do anything, and nobody's going from first base, so he would have to do something really crazy in order to 
pick off Ben Thomas. Wind up and the pitch. Inside. You know what I'm saying, Tom? I mean, he'll have to pirouette. Oh, strike. Looked inside from here. I agree. Uh, it, it just seems to be his windup. Ben Thomas creeping down the line. There's another strike. One and two. Maybe Ben Thomas can put some pressure on that catcher if he can see him out of the corner of his eye, take his eye off the pitch, do something on the base path. Panza set to deliver the one-two pitch. And this is up the middle and dropped by the shortstop. Ben Thomas will score. Everybody's safe. And it's 1-0 post-77, but Kavanaugh missed the bat. No, no, he did not make an attempt to go to second base. No. I don't know if he missed the bag or the ump thought he made an attempt to go to second base, but Ben Thomas does score. So it will be a 1-0 lead for post-77 as we head to the top of the second. Some controversy at the... Uh, End of the bottom of the first, but Post 77 has the lead on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the second inning, stepping in is Spencer Checkaway, the shortstop. Owen Ward set to deliver. And this is up the third base side, past the reach of Rossi. In the left field it goes, and that is going to be a leadoff single for Checkaway. Some power on that ball, and that'll bring up Henry Bonenfant, the DH. Uh, no chance for Lewis Rossi. He thinks he can get to every ball, but that absolutely had uh, chalk written all over it. Good attempt, I must say. Always makes a good attempt. Owen Ward now working from the stretch, a slight lead by Checkaway. That's fouled away. Oh, and one. For those wondering what happened at the end of that last inning, uh, that should not have been called an out. You have to make an attempt at trying to go to second base. He just spun around. Yeah, if that was the call, I agree with you. That should not have been an out. Is that strike two? Because it looked like he just ran pretty much straight up the line and looked towards second base. He didn't actually make a step towards it. And he was trying to avoid the first baseman who was up the line. But I thought he was trying to get back to the first base bag, so I thought maybe he missed the bag. Well, that's possible. Only you would know in the editing room, but. We'll have to get the uh, word from uh, Coach Johnson what happened there. As that pitch up high, and the catcher looks up the line towards Checkaway. He's back to the bag. And that is strike three. One away. Grant Juliano uh, will step in. Juliano, the first baseman for Newton. Ward working from the stretch. And this is hit in the air over to center field, ranging a little bit to his left and making the catch as Brad Seymour two away. Staying put at first base is Spencer Checkaway. Brandon Elias, the second baseman, will step in. He's a young, diminutive, diminutive young fellow. Let's see what he's got for power. That pitch called strike. Uh, I don't agree, but uh, goes that's way. I was, uh, I was getting ready to put the ball in on my clicker. Yeah, I was going to ask the third base coach to move out of my way. We'll take it though. This is hit high in the air over to left center and arranging to his left making the catch is Dom Cavanaugh and that will retire the side here in this top of the second to the bottom of the second we go. Post 77 with a one nothing lead on Newton. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM. I thought 24 was playing second base. 
I thought he was too. I they like switch things around on us. Yeah, those friggin' idiots. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. That's not a big deal. I can ask him after the game. That's Dobid. Oh, Coach agreed with it, so I guess he did. Uh, he might have to change his mind after he watches it. All right. Whenever Gustafson, Jewett, oh, and Seymour. <laughs> no problem. I'll just count down. Huh? I don't think I stopped last minute either. Oh, really? Okay. Three, two, one. Bottom of the second inning, coming up for post 77, the five, six, and seven hitters. Luke Gustafson, the DH, Sean Drew at the catcher, and Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Looks like Gustafson's a switch hitter. If not mistaken, he was hitting from the left side last night. I'll have to get the 4 1 1 from Jake Obid, the third base coach. Anthony Panza set to deal. There's a strike. We did get the official word from uh, Coach Johnson that the out in the at the end of the bottom of the first was because the hitter turned towards the second base bag, and then that's why he tried to get back to first because that was the ruling by the umpire. So that's why they were able to tag him out. So far, he's called an inside pitch a strike, and a, well, that was a now it's one and one. The 1-1. One, one. There's a strike, at least as said by the home plate umpire. And Gustafson clearly doesn't like those two strikes that have been called on him. It's been an interesting strike zone so far today. The 1-2. Oh, two I thought he was going to get rung <laughs> up right there. But he doesn't get right behind the catcher. Sort of is about a foot and a half, 18 inches behind the catcher. So he gets a little different view than somebody that's a little bit closer. There's the 2-2. Two -two. That one in the dirt. I don't think there's any debate there on the fact that was a ball. That was definitely a ball. If the ball does hit the dirt before the play, I was kind that's of a ball, I right? Was, I was being a little sarcastic. All right, well... <laughs> Full count on Gustafson. You do know your strike zone, though. Well, I've watched a lot of games. Yes. Wind up and the pitch. That's outside, and Gustafson draws the walk. Pant is very uh, deliberate, I must say. I think Jewett will call time if he's holding the ball for five seconds or more. It's a little tiring holding that bat up. Jewett steps in with a runner on first. No outs here in this bottom of the second. Big lead over at first for Gustafson. Check in, he's back. Clearly he's got a better move than that. What Coach Simos of Hopkins and High says to do is to just have that bat on your shoulder. And as soon as they go into their motion, pull it up. Lead once again for Gustafson. Back to the bag he goes. So he started with the dummy move and then he went to a way better move. Another lead for Gustafson. This time Panza will deliver, but a late time call by Jewett. Yeah, that's what you, you know, slow worker. 
batter's going to call time. He's got that clock in his head, 1-1000, one, 2-1000, one thousand, one thousand, and so on. Everybody's got their own clock, but really, Gusson says there's not a threat to steal. Wind up in the pitch. And there's the scouting report delivered by Larry. <laughs> well, you saw him last night. I mean, you saw the same thing I did. But uh, there was a little moaning and groaning coming out of the post-77 dugout there. Check in, Gustafson back. He does like to mess with the pitcher a lot, though. Well, he's not going to stray too far off where he might meet the wrath of his teammates. And this is fouled up the right heads side. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Oh, my goodness gracious. Did that just hit somebody? A fan in a red chair. Oh, boy. Hope he's okay. Well, he's going to shag that ball. Another lead for Gustafson. And this is up the third base side, fouled towards yeah, us. Error on the third base coach. Should have got down on a knee and got that ball. It's because he shaved for the game today. Sean Jewett is hitting a 429 on the season. Lead off of first. That pitch down low. Nice pick by Goldstein. You don't want to pick like that too much. You want to get your knees down, your chest forward. Let it bounce off you, if anything. And this is up the middle and bobbled by the second baseman, and he's going to get nobody. Everybody's safe. He was right behind the second base bag, but not able to get a grasp on it. And Sean Jewett reaches on the error. It's called Know the Field You're Playing On. As I say every broadcast, this field is haunted, the infield. He got the shortstop last inning and it got the second baseman this inning who's kicking the ball around out second base. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, will step in. That certainly is haunted, no doubt about that. Now that we realize that it's sloped towards first base, that's why when we get a bad rainstorm, there's that big pond out there that doesn't drain very well. Seymour fouls that one away. Brad was hitting 286 heading into yesterday's action. Coach Johnson sprinkling some speed in towards the bottom of the lineup. Brad Seymour will be joining Lewis Rossi and young Pesson boy, Ben Thomas at UMass. That pitch up high. Shouldn't forget Coach Dylan O'Leary working hard this summer. He was heading out to UMass too. Seymour actually got the uh, day off for yesterday's game, so back in the lineup today. That pitch up high. Panza cer certainly uh, didn't like that call. Started to walk towards home plate. A lot better of opening his mouth and turned back around. I'd say the last thing you want to do if you're the pitcher is get the umpire mad. The 2-1. And this is fouled away. 2-2. Two and two. two up next is Zach Peston followed by Ronan Bates. 2 on, no outs, 4 post 77, a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the second. The lefty pitcher set to deliver. Fouled away. Pretty good at bat for Brad. That's a rough break if you are Newton. You more than likely uh, would have had a double play if you weren't playing on this haunted infield here at Ashland Middle School. Yep. They'd like to keep it that way. It's a little home field advantage. Ooh, we got a Bach. Both runners will move up. He could have come to the set and then came up again. 
So it is now runners on second and third with no outs. Infield in at the corners. And both runners will head back as Panza steps off the mound and takes a look over. Well, these are the types of situations that Coach Johnson loves to be in. Two in scoring position with no outs. You know, some sort of base running trickery is more than likely going to happen. Sometime today. They had it last night with Rankatori getting in a pickle. Or was that the night before? Full count pitch here. And there's a called strike. Brad Seymour did not like it. One away. Zach Pesson will step in. See how deep he gets in the batter's box after last night's little tutoring from Coach Johnson, where he hit a nice double. Right center field gap after being told to back up a half an inch. But don't change his swing. Line up in the pitch. Upstairs. Here's the 1 0. Called strike. I did not like that one. He, the very low strike zone. He can't bend over for some particular reason. So he loses sight of the ball. And that's the uh, issue that a lot of the hitters are having with this home plate umpire is the low strike zone. This is up the left side. The shortstop able to glove it. Throw to first, pulls the first baseman off the bag. Everybody's safe. It's 2-0 post-77. Luke Gustafson comes around to score. Sean Jewett advances to third. Zach Pesson reaches on the errant throw. Second error of the inning for Newton. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the second baseman. Shortstop got the ball clean enough. His throw is up the line. Now, do you agree that that was an error? Well, we'll watch Pesson take off. Checking at first. Runner back safe. Runners on the corners, one out. Another run in for post 77. It's a 2 0 lead. Sean Jewish should be way down the line as he sees Panzer go to the plate. Ball. Ronan Bates is playing club ball. It's always a good idea if you don't make a varsity team in college, but you match Lowell. Pans is set to deliver. Upstairs. So he got his at bats Ronan. as he would have in high school, but a little better competition. Ronan Bates so far one for 11 on the season at the plate. Mostly in uh, pinch hitting performances. Gives this one a ride over to right field and it is caught, runner from third going to tag and he will easily score. It is a three nothing lead for post 77. A job well done by Ronan Bates. RBI, RBI, RBI. Absolutely. Top of the lineup, Ben Thomas. That's right. Runner Had that up. single between first and second, his first time up. Runner on first, two outs. Two more in this inning, four post 77, a three nothing lead. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Will they sacrifice, send uh, Pesson, Zach Pesson? Hopefully he'll get in there second baseman and if he gets thrown out, you lead off with Ben Thomas. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Line up in the pitch. And this is sent over to left field way deep and that is going to drop near the wall and get down. Heading over to third is Pesson. Here he comes to score. It is a four nothing lead for post 77 and now Thomas advancing to third on the errant throw and he's safe. Shortstop was late covering the third base bag. 
but the pitcher should have seen that bag abandoned and gone over there himself. So an RBI double for Ben Thomas, advances the third on the throw. Get the oxy clean out, Mrs. Thomas. <laughs> That'll bring up Lewis Rossi. I could taste that dirt from here. That was quite a slide by Thomas. There's a really high baseball IQ. There's a strike, 0 and 1 to Lewis Rossi. He gave that ball a ride. That yeah. was a drop right in front of the wall, pretty much. That one outside, one and one. Does have power everywhere, and as I mentioned last night, he's going to try and walk on the UMass baseball team. I'm sure if he doesn't make it, he'll play club ball. Just loves baseball. That one's fouled away. Well, it certainly looks like the bats are getting going today after a couple of slow offensive games. I'm sure the young Panza isn't too happy about that. Couple of costly errors for Newton have extended this inning. And there is strike three. He's going to run up the line to throw over, no problem. That'll be the third out, but post 77 plates three more runs. It is a 4 0 game as we head to the top of the third on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the third inning, 8 9 and 1 due up for Newton as Brett Goldstein, the catcher, steps in. Wind up in the pitch from Owen Ward. There's a strike. Pretty uh, lengthy bottom of the second as post 77 was able to plate three runs. A lot of that due to a couple errors by Newton. There's another strike, 0 and 2. That was a really a delayed call. I was waiting around. That is foul. Sean Jewett wasn't taking any chances. He ran up the third baseline. That was smart because I was a little unsure. Here's the 0-2. That's fouled away. Brett Goldstein, Mike Banks, and Ryan McLaughlin to step in this inning for Newton. And this is up the left side, just over the reach of Rossi, and that's going to be a base hit for Goldstein. Well, they giveth and they take it away. Yep. That just took an awkward hop on the lip of the grass over the reach of Rossi, and that'll bring up Mike Banks. Somebody I'll call Ash Ashland Park and Rec to have them redo the skin. This is getting a little bit silly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some weeds growing out there towards the end of the grass near second base. Well, Lewis ought to know that third base area for the last couple of years, but that cut of the gra and the cut in front of the uh, third base bag is problematic. You just don't know where the ball is going to go. Oh, and one on Banks, runner on, no outs for Newton. And this is up the left side. That'll get through the gap for a base hit. It'll be two on with no outs for Newton. See the funky uh, bounce when it hit the uh, back of the lip of the uh, infield behind Hornung. And I think uh, Lewis Rossi, he took off his glove. Was there some kind of malfunction there? All right, as long as it wasn't a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Ryan McLaughlin steps in. Both runners back as Ward steps off the mound. Ward working from the stretch. Inside. 
one and zero oh on Ryan McLaughlin. He flew out and is only at bat so far this game. Ward looks at second and deals. Oh ball my goodness! Two. I don't know about that call. No, I don't know about that call either. But it was a ball nonetheless. But Owen Ward is not nearly as deliberate as Panzer. And this is going to take a couple hops up the left side. Throw over to second by Rossi, and they get one. Nicely Two. done. Two, excuse me, stepped on the third base bag and threw over to second. So that was a uh, five to four double play. Just nailed the runner at second base, but that ought to make Lou Rossi very happy that the ball that popped over his head erased that runner. He's smiling about it. He generally doesn't smile. Good or bad. So Ryan McLaughlin aboard on the 5 to 4 double play. He's taken off. The throw up by Jewett is not in time. Pretty good throw, though, by Jewett. Jewett was a little delayed uh, on that throw as well. And he almost got him still. You don't catch the ball clean in your glove. You might as well just eat it. But he made it a close play. Swain follows that one away. Oh, and two count. That one low, one and two. Ward back to the stretch. Looks at second and steps off. Different pitchers will have different holds. Owen Ward holds the ball high up to his shoulders when he comes to the set rather than the belt. Ward deals upstairs. Sorry there, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, that's all right. I was just talking about shoulders, ribs, belt. Sometimes you can tip your pitches depending on where you set up. And there is strike three. That will wrap up the top of the third to the bottom of the inning we go. It's a 4 nothing post-77 lead on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the third inning, three, four, and five do up for post 77. Jackson Hornung, Dom Cavanaugh, and Luke Gustafson. Good part of the order to have up for post 77 to try to continue the offensive momentum they got going. They have four runs, only off of two hits, a pair of errors from Newton uh, extended last inning, and I don't know where that pitch was going. You're this probably too young for this, but it was uh, just a bit outside. That's called air mail. <laughs> You don't have air mail with the uh, email. That's uh, an air mail ball. And the, there's another one. Hmm. Is he having some struggles out there, perhaps? Maybe, uh, or if he hurt his arm or something. Um, I'm not sure, but those were very wild. Both of them. Still Anthony Panza out there. He didn't look too wild in the first couple innings. This one's driven right to the shortstop. Out of his glove it goes. Picks it up. Throws the first in time. Six to three on the out. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Those are the types of balls that were hit last night. I hope that doesn't jinx. I'm always the jinxer, but those balls were hit hard last night, but right at people. Just like that. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Dom doesn't seem to like that call. <laughs> Panza deals. This is hit in the air, foul up the right oh, side. Oh. That was right near a bunch of fans. Fortunately, did not hit anybody. Would you call that a gaggle of fans or? A bunch. A bunch, okay. A grouping. Is 
is a nest of fans behind home This plate. ball is tattooed to center field, and that is going to be a one-out single for Kavanaugh. That was a frozen rope time. It certainly was. And Gustafson, the DH, will step in. Kavanaugh's got a little speed. Luke walked it last inning and scored one of the three runs in the inning for post 77. Bit of a lead at first. Swinging strike. Lucas has a brother, does he not? He does. I, just I didn't mean to give you a Jeopardy question, but. I believe he does. I believe his brother is older. Yes. I and taller. Yes. I think he was on the team last year, if I'm not mistaken. One and one count on Luke Gustafson. Big lead at first for Kavanaugh. That's fouled away. One and two. Those soccer players behind the backstop are doing an awful lot of running tonight, Tom. If you want to take off for an inning or so and jump in, it's going to be all right. Runner with a lead off of first. Panzer set to deal the one two. Upstairs, two and two. Oh, Panza. Seems to work even slower when there's men on base. Yeah, he's really deliberate. But you know, I almost uh, made the USA World Cup team this year. Oh, did you? Yes. Well, the fact they didn't qualify it doesn't really surprise me. A called strike there. Oh my goodness. I don't think Luke Gustafson agreed with that one. Two away, and Sean Jew at the catcher will step in. That one. <laughs> looks very inside. I don't know, but uh, Luke Gustafson uh, put his head down as he marched back to the dugout. Called strike there, and that one looked low. 0 and well, 1. A little breaking pitch, little, little yacker, baby yacker, we'll call it. I don't normally get on the umps too much, but I'm not liking the strike and ball calls tonight. And neither of the hitters are staring down at the third base coach like they're going to get some help from Jacob Obid. Runner with a lead off of first. Check in, back safe. Since he threw the dummy move, his very first pickoff, now he's going to do his, his best move every time. All I know is this home plate umpire has a very large strike zone. <laughs> I thought that was strike three right there. Yeah, At least well, with the uh, strike zone we've been working with tonight. Sean's happy to still be in the batter's box. The one, two. Kavanaugh with a lead off of first. And this is up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman, but it's foul. The very long reach of the first baseman. He's got to be at least 6'3, six, 6'4. Grant Uliano was on the big uh, part of this Newton team last season as well. Wind up in the pitch. That one's inside. Here's a little piece of trivia for you, Tom. The post Fafati is located in an area in Newton called Nonantum. If you go to Wikipedia, they have their own language that they speak down there. It's a little bit of slang and whatnot. There's six or seven words that have made it into modern nomenclature. The 2-2. Two -two. And this is up the left side. Dropped by the third baseman. The throw over. Not in time. Everyone's safe. Sean Jewett reaches on the... Error, and that'll bring up Brad Seymour. Mm. 
I'm not sure where you're going with that trivia question, but well, I have no so idea. have you ever heard the word mush? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's somebody that's not too bright. If you're from that area of Newton. Ah. Line up in the pitch. And this is up the left side. Takes a hop. Third baseman grabs it. Steps on the bag. No problem. And a five unassisted out to retire the side in the bottom of the third. It is a 4-0 post-77 lead as we head to the top of the fourth on WACA TV and HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, 3-4 and 5 do up for Newton. Noah Shelton, Spencer Checkaway, and Henry Bonenfant. 4-0 lead for post-77 as Owen Ward continues on. That one outside, 1-0. And this is hit high in the air over to shallow center field. Now ranging in to make the catch on the edge of the dirt is Jackson Hornung, one away. Just a little splash of sun out in right field. And we're in the shadow time. That's right. Spencer Checkaway, the shortstop, stepping in. That one low. I disagree. <laughs> that one I actually agreed with. <laughs> okay. There's a strike, one and one. It's basically the same pitch. Upstairs, two and one. Newton dug out, still in the sun. That is a home field benefit as well for post 77. They're in the shade pretty much all game long. This is up the third base side, and that is going to be a fair ball. Rounding first, heading over to second. Now he'll stop in his path and go back to first. It's a one out single for Checkaway. Fourth hit of the game for Newton. Henry Bonenfant, the DH, will step in. Ward back to the stretch. Runner with a lead off of first. That's fouled away. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland to Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera for today's action. Our third game of the week, two more to go as the post 77 playing every weekday here on their home field at Ashland Middle School. There's a strike. <laughs> Well, they had to wait for that one, but if you folks want to come down for a real bond burner, come down and see the first place Lowell Club take on the Ashland team Friday night. There's strike three, two away. That is the third strikeout of the game by Owen Ward. Correction, fourth strikeout of the game by Owen Ward. As Grant Uliano, the first baseman, will step in. He went deep the last time. Flew out to uh, Brad Seymour. There's a strike. Ward's dealing. He's just pretty much putting it right in the strike zone. It's not as overpowering as Fink was last night, but he's getting the job done. That pitch low, one and one. Another Hollis, Holliston. Rising senior. Yeah, look out for that Holliston club in the TVL next year. That pitch down low, runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be dropped by Bates. And Checkaway is safe. Second stolen base of the game for Newton. Ronan went for the extra tag, just in case he lifted his foot off the base. That was another great throw by Jewett. Got a pretty good jump on Owen Ward. In all fairness, Ronan Bates going to hold him on tight. Wind up in the pitch. Inside. Three and one count. On board, went with a little slide step on that last pitch. 
There's a strike that'll fill up the count. Two outs, runner on second for Newton, who's trailing Ashland four to nothing. Runner is straying way off the second base bag. Takes a look at second and deals. A lot and of ooze. That is a walk. A lot of ooze from the post 77 dugout. Yeah, it was close. Brandon Elias, the second baseman, will step in. Two on, two outs. Down low, 1-0. and oh. The lack of a leg kick can shave some tenths of a second off to the plate. That one inside as the batter had to duck away. Lost his helmet and everything. No intent there. Surprised we didn't get a strike call. Well, got a point. <laughs> had to say it. Wind up in the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field. Could be trouble, and it's caught. Jackson Hornung with the backhanded catch. That right there. Is the play of the day. Mark that as a web gem. And that is the third out of the top of the fourth. Two reach, but no harm done. It's a 4 0 post 77 lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for post 77, 8, 9, and 1. Zach Pesson, Ronan Bates, and Ben Thomas. Anthony Panza back out there for another inning of work. 4-0 lead for Ashland. Wind up in the pitch. Ball one. No, <laughs> you waited two seconds. You got a strike call, I think. I thought he said ball. Well, okay. There's a strike. One and one. Okay. Ashland scored one run in the first, three in the second. And this is up the middle. Glove by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three on the out. Ronan Bates will step in. I'm going to clock Panza if he gets a runner on to see how long it takes him from the time he gets it back from the catcher. Yeah, we need to have that uh, clock rule that the minor leagues are oh. using now. 20 seconds. Some of these pitches are taking far longer than that. I think Pans is waiting for some darkness. Fouled away. Well, after four and a half, it will be an official game. To be honest with you, I'm getting a little tired. This game has slowed down. Panza slows the game down. The 0 1. And this is up the third base side foul. That's two errors for Jake Obid this, this game. Well, he is fielding barehanded out there. That's true. We'll give him that. Right. That one in the dirt. One and two. Good block by Goldstein. One ball, two strikes on the batter. Panza sets a deal. That's fouled away. Count remains one and two. We've got a crowd out in right field now. Yeah, I understand we have some former players in attendance. There's a strike. Ronan Bates knew it, two away. Ben Thomas will step in, who's having quite a day. Two for two at the plate. Singled in the first, doubled in the second. Scored in the first, drove in a run in the second. Pan 
Hands is set to deal. Inside. The 1 0. Ball two. The 2 0. Chin music. 3 and 0. Lewis Rossi do up next if Ben Thomas is able to reach. Two outs in the inning for post 77. There's a called strike. Three and one. Well, after that bomb he hit, the left fielder is. Uh, Playing quite a bit deeper than he was last time. And this is driven into left field, but right to Matt Swain, who is able to make the catch. One, two, three, they go in the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth. We go. It's a 4 nothing post-77 lead on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the fifth inning, 8-9-1 and one due up for Newton. Brett Goldstein, Mike Banks, and Ryan McLaughlin. That was an impressive catch uh, behind us by Cole Glassburn. Went between the legs there. Well, he's got nothing else better to do, I think. He's riding pine tonight. I noticed he was kind of standing in front of you when that ball was being thrown in his direction. Well. I think you better be careful, Larry. Yeah. That one, oh. That's a called ball, 1-0. Oh. Oh. Wood wanted that one. Stared in at the umpire. It looked like a strike to me. It's in the dirt. 2 and 0. Oh. No hustle on the Newton play grabbing that ball. Now he's getting it. Set to deliver. And this is a chip shot up the left side. Slow roller on the grass. Rossi picks it up, throw it to first, no problem. Five to three on the out. Mike Banks will step in, the right fielder. Lewis Rossi came charging in. He got the ball in the hop. Throw it off, threw a little bit off balance. Got the speedy gold steam. Banks singled his last time up. Line up in the pitch. It's a bunt. Up the middle, picked up by Ward, throw to first, got him. One to three. Two away. Ryan McLaughlin to step in. Zach Pesson is playing some uh, really good defense at first base this year. Certainly is. Line up in the pitch from Ward. Check swing, couldn't hold, strike one. Home plate umpire called that one. No need to check with the first base umpire. Clearly went around. Just strike. There's strike two. The 0-2 in the dirt, one and two. Look good, look good. Two balls, two strikes, one out. The one-two pitch. Two and two. Whoa. Ward set to deliver. And this is up the middle, pass Ward, picked up by the shortstop. Good throw by Hornung, no problem. Six to three on the out. We will head to the bottom of the fifth as Newton goes one, two, three. It's a four nothing lead. Four post 77 on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fifth inning, two, three, and four do up for post 77. Lewis Rossi, Jackson Horning, and Don Cavanaugh. Rossi 0 for two so far today. 
I'd say he's overdue for a hit. As Anthony Panza gets set to deal, the bunt pulled back, 1-0. For our French viewers, that last inning was un de toi, un de toi. That would be one, two, three, Tom in French. We like those un de toi innings. Certainly do. There's a strike, one and one. Louis Rossi went 0 for 2 with a walk yesterday. So he's looking for his first hit since Monday. That pitch outside, says the home plate umpire. I agree with that one, two and one. Did he say it or did he demonstrate it with his uh, arms? Both. Okay. There's a strike, two and two. Luis Rossi has flown out and struck out so far today. That one low. Full count. I don't know if post 77 can string together uh, six runs. We'll be out of here. That's right. I can go get my bag of chips. That's fouled away. Rossi staying alive with a full count. Jackson Horning on deck. Wind up and the pitch. There's a called strike. <laughs> One away. Lewis Rossi makes the slow walk back to the dugout. Yeah, he didn't like that call very much. Jackson Horning will step in. He's 0 for 2 today. Grounded out both times up, but made a terrific defensive play in this game. That was to end the fourth for Newton. Called strike there, 0 and 1. Lined up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0-2. <laughs> None of the uh, Ashland uh, hitters that uh, disagree with the call are getting any sympathy from the Newton bench, but they're looking down at the third base coach to ask for help other than, other than saying just get back in the box. Jake Obed can't help. And this is going to be up the middle. Slow roller, takes a couple hops on the grass, picked up by the second baseman, throw over in time. Four to three on the out, two away. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. That was a good effort by Hornung, almost beat, it, beat the throw up the line. He takes nothing off. Pedal to the metal player, Jackson Hornung. Certainly is. Line up in the pitch. Inside. 1 0. Oh. Pans is set to deal. No, he isn't. There he is. And this is hit in the air over to right field and caught. One, two, three, they go in the bottom of the fifth to the top of the sixth we go. Post 77 leading Newton four to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the sixth inning, two, three, and four do up for Newton. Matt Swain, Noah Shelton, and Spencer Checkaway. Owen Ward continuing on with a great pitching performance so far. He's thrown five innings, given up four hits, no runs. And he's also struck out four hitters. We do have warm up action for post 77. We'll fill you in with that in just a bit. First pitch is a called ball. That's a uh, Looks Andrew like. Sternick. Yep. Uh, 
And this is up the left side past the reach of Jackson Horning, a leadoff single for Matt Swain. We'll bring up Noah Shelton, the third baseman. Well, the only clean inning for, well, there's been two clean innings for Owen Ward, the first and the fifth. But he has not given up any runs yet. A pitch called inside, 1-0. Working from the stretch, as he has been the majority of this game. And this is hit high in the air over to left field, and it will be caught by Dom Cavanaugh. One on, one out. Spencer Checkaway, the shortstop, to step in. It's been yet another great starter, starting pitching performance for post 77. Runner getting a little bit of a greedy lead over there, but. There's a strike. Uh, third base coach didn't like that call, but uh, goes both ways. Time called by Checkaway. Ward from the stretch. He deals down low. One they've and been, one. They've been successful two out of their two times they've stolen on Ward. Line up in the pitch. And this is hit over the reach award into center field it goes. And this is going to allow the lead runner to head over to third as it gets by Brad Seymour. He's going to head home. The throw in is not in time. It's a 4-1 to one game. And now the throw back to second to try to get the hitter. And checkaway is safe at second base. So it turns into an RBI double. And as Matt Swain comes around to score, a little misplay out there in center field by Brad Seymour. That'll bring up Henry Bonenfant. Got to give a hit and an error on that, I think, Tom. Yeah, it could give the error. Go one and one. Sure, why not? That pitch down low, one and oh. So a single and the advance on the error by Checkaway. First error of the game for post 77. And this is hit in the air over to right field. This could be trouble, and it is, as it drops in front of Ben Thomas. Lead runner heading to third, and the throw in is cut off by Ward on the third base side as Bonenfon heads the second. So a single by Bonenfon, an advance on the throw. Check away safe at third, and Newton has something brewing here in the top of the sixth. Well, that was uncharacteristically a bad fundamental play over throwing the cutoff man allowed the runner to get to second base. Here comes Grant Giuliano to the plate. On this Newton team, they've been very successful the last few seasons. They're young this year, but they still have some talent. They're not a team you can sleep on. Well, I'm from Newton originally, so I can sleep on them. I guess I got that right. Line up in the pitch. Swinging strike, 0 and 1. Just flailed at that pitch. And now I think uh, there might be some serious consideration of perhaps getting Ward out of this game sooner than expected. If this path continues on. 1 and 1. 1 in, 1 out, 2 on. A four to one lead for post 77, but Newton continuing to threaten here in the top of the sixth. That's fouled away. One and two. He's ripe for a curveball right here. So there's double barrel action in the bullpen. Sternick and Tomaselli. 
And there's a strike. Out number two. I called it the bender. Two fastballs and a curve. Fifth strikeout of the game for Owen Ward as Brendan Elias, the second baseman, steps in. Elias has got a chance to knock in two runs. And this is up the left side. That's past Rossi. One run is in. A second run being waved around. Now he's stopped as he's midway down the third base path. A great throw in there by Cavanaugh. It's a 4-2 to two game. Runners on the corners with two outs for Newton. Spencer Checkaway came around to score. Ron Font back to third base. That'll bring up Brett Goldstein, the catcher. Go ahead run at the plate. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. Newton coach giving the signals to the runner on first base. Will they attempt to steal? And this is going to be up the middle. That'll get down. Another run in for Newton. And now the lead runner heading over to third. It's going to be runners on the corners and a 4-3 to three ball game. An RBI single for Brett Goldstein, the catcher. Steen. Brandon Elias to third. And Bonifant in for the run. And that'll bring up Mike Banks, the right fielder. Jake Obed going to take a trip out to the mound. Well, that means Owen Ward will stay in the game. Looks like Coach Sullivan really wants him to at least get through this inning. We'll have a quick visit. Coach Johnson, excuse me. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Are you reading my mind, though? <laughs> Ward working from the stretch. And there's a strike to Mike Banks, the right fielder. So many people down here with iPhones you can, or Smartphones, you can hear the dings all over the, uh, all over the place. And this is hit in the air over to right center, and it is caught by Ben Thomas to finally retire the side in the top of the six. But Newton has plated three runs, and they are right back in this game. It is four to three as we head to the bottom of the six on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 4-3 post-77 lead. The Newton Bats came alive in the top of the inning, and they are back in this game. Anthony Pan's out there to continue on. The windup and the pitch. Ball one to Luke Gustafson, the DH. Luke Gustafson, Sean Jewett, and Brad Seymour do up this inning. Four post-77. And this is hit in the air. And it is going to be caught by the third baseman. One away, Sean Jewett, the catcher, to step in. Well, on the good side of things, Newton will be down to their final three outs next inning. How are those potato chips between innings, Tom? All right? Pretty good. Oh. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. Well, you'd have to imagine that the book is closed on Owen Ward as this one is up the right side. That'll get into right field for a single. Sean Jewett aboard. And he's reached base so far on two errors and now reaches on a single. Ooh, Brad Simo is going to step up to the plate now. Newton had five hits to drive in Three runs in the top of this sixth inning. Oh, 
John Jewett likes to take risks on the base, base paths. Line up in the pitch. And this is tattooed into center field. That'll get down. And it's going to be runners on first and second. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, to step in. Two on, one out. Both runners with slight leads. There's a strike. Thomas Eileen Sternick back in the bullpen. Now Panza has to work out of this little jam. Panza set to deliver upstairs. I'm kind of surprised Panza's still out there. He's throwing a lot of pitches in this game. Well, they don't have any warm up activity. I believe they did earlier. Well, now they're getting up just as soon as I mention it. They're listening. They're spying. And this is going to be hit in the air over to right center. That's going to get down for a base hit. Coming around is Sean Jewett. Another runner being waved around behind him. That's Brad Seymour. Two runs will score, and that's going to be a triple for Zach Pesson. A two RBI triple, and it's a six to three ball game. That coaching from Coach Johnson. Oh, done wonders for the Pesson boy. Two nights in a row, he creams it. He's okay. smiling there, even though his back is towards us. He's got a big grin. Warren Bates will step in, and he certainly should be smiling after that hit. Crush that ball. And that is well-needed insurance for post-77. That pitch up high. Well, maybe they let it panzer in just a little bit too long. Well, I did say I was surprised to see him out there. You did. Time called. What's the Bronx cheer for? Not sure. Perhaps, uh, I don't know. Some kind of discussion going on here with the coaches and the umpires. I don't know if the pitcher is over the limit of allowed pitches or something along those lines. There is a pitch limit in Legion baseball. I would never knew that. Line up and the pitch. That one's fisted foul, one and one. Bates fouls this one away. One and two. Panzas really slowed things down. Really, really slowed things down. Well, I think uh, they should have taken him out heading into this inning, but post 77 will, will, uh, Enjoy it. Two and two. Infield playing in for Newton. Still Got only it. one out in the inning as well. Yeah, they don't want Zach Pest in the score. The one one. And this is a slow roller up the middle, picked up by Panza. He'll turn around towards home, then throw to first and get the out. So one to three out, two away, and that'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder. Hey, 
And it looks like we're going to have a pitching change here. So there will be a new pitcher for Newton. With two outs, two more runs already in for post 77. It's a 6-3 to three lead for Ashland. We'll take a timeout. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA-TV. Continuing on in the bottom of the six, a new pitcher for Newton. Henry Wyatt comes into the game after Anthony Panzo in five-plus innings, giving up six runs, four of which were earned. Ben Thomas stepping in. That is fouled away. If his teammates uh, had, any, had some sensitivity training, they would have brushed off his uniform number so folks at home could see. Six hits in the game, four post 77, six runs in. A couple of the runs that scored due to errors. Ben Thomas having a good day at the plate, two for three overall. And he'll smash this one, but it's a great catch by the shortstop. Spencer Checkaway jumps up and rips it out of the air. But post 77 plates two more runs, and they lead it 6-3 to three as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the seventh inning, a new pitcher in the game for post 77. Matt Tomaselli is out there. He's only pitched two-thirds of an inning so far this season. And uh, ZRA, <laughs> 31.50, but of course that's a little deceptive as he hasn't had much experience on the mound. He gave up three earned runs in the two-thirds of an inning. But Coach uh, Johnson has faith in him, so he's putting him out there. If Coach Johnson has faith in him, I think we should have faith in him too, Larry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Lucas Gustafson is uh, warming up in the pen just in case there's any trouble, a sniff of trouble. Coach Johnson will be out there in a country heartbeat, as they say. That pitch down low to the leadoff man, Ryan McLaughlin, a two and one count. Newton down to their final three outs. As this is fouled away, two and two. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that is going to be strike three. No run necessary as Juet holds onto it and the umps calls him out. That'll bring up Matt Swain, the left fielder. Wind up in the pitch. Spike that one. Yeah, that one down low. Just a little bit low. Newton down to their last two outs. There's a strike. Thomas Ellie will be a senior next year at Holliston High School. Two and one is the count on Swain. Swain had a nice hit the last time up, if I recollect. And this is up the middle. Slow roller picked up by the first baseman. He'll run it over. Three unassisted out number two. Awesome. Noah Shelton will step in. And Matt Tomaselli will be credited with a save if he's able to get through this inning. Well, how do you think it? Oh, it's within three it's three, runs. three runs. For those interested in the Red Sox game, two days late, 0-0 zero, zero in the first inning. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. This is driven into left center. That'll get down for a base hit. A two-out single for Shelton. That'll bring up Spencer Checkaway, the shortstop. That's the 10th hit of the day for Newton. They might be out hitting uh, post 77. They are, 10 to 6. Ball one. 
Checkaway is having a great day at the plate. This is a hitter to be aware of. Three for three. He singled all three times. Drove in a run in the sixth and scored. There's a strike, one and one. He had a great defensive play. Last inning on a line drive, he climbed the ladder to snag a line drive. He is also the cleanup man. And he gets a piece of this one up the middle. Glove by the shortstop, flip to second. That's the ball game. A six to four force out will close it out. And Ashland post 77 comes away with the six to three victory. It got scary for a little bit as Newton went on a three run rally in the top of the six to make it a four to three game. But on the bottom of the inning, post 77 added some insurance and never looked back. Ashland six runs on six hits. Committed one error. Newton, three runs on 10 hits, committed three errors, two of them which were very costly and led to post 77 runs. It was a pretty good start by Owen Ward. Things got a little rocky in the sixth, but it was smooth sailing pretty much throughout. Your offensive star of the game is going to go to Ben Thomas. He went two for four at the plate, scored a run, and drove in a run, and also had a double to his credit. Ben Thomas, your offensive star of the game. As Ashland post 77 improves to nine and three, Newton falls to four and seven overall. The final score for the final time, Ashland post 77 takes down Newton by a final score of six to three. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on either HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, or HCAT in Holliston. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night, everybody.